Hi everyone, PV here and welcome to today's YouTube video. And today we're going to be playing one of the other decks that I consider to be the tier 1 decks in this standard format. Uh, so Crimson Vow changed the format a little bit, but not that much. And the thing that it did the most was increase the power of decks that were already good. So before uh, Innistrad, uh, Crimson Vow, we had, I think, uh, Isa turns uh, Mono Green and Mono White as the three best decks. And they were, I think, the clear three best decks, the consensus best decks. And all these decks got better. So even though some other decks uh, did get better as well, like Vampires or Black White Control or Zombies and stuff like that, uh, or, you know, the Blue Black stuff, I think the fact that the three best decks all improved means they're at least good contenders for remaining the three best decks, right? So we're going to play them. Uh, I'm going to talk about the decks a little bit. I'm going to have a playthrough. And last video we did Blue Red, and today we're going to do Mono Green. So the biggest changes in the deck, they're not that many, right? The changes are small, but they're very meaningful. Uh, it's Ascendant Pack Leader and Overwall Oddity in the main deck, at least. Uh, the Pack Leader is a pretty innocuous card, right? It's just a 2-1 one for 1 that sometimes grows into a 3-2 or very rarely a 4-3. But just having a 1-drop means so much for a deck like this because the deck is very clunky and it's trying to curve out, right? So you have a 2, a 3, a 4. Uh, you used to have 5s as well, which meant that you could never just play two things. Right, you're gonna play a two drop on turn two, and then a three drop on turn three, or a four drop on turn three, depending on uh, you know what your two drop is. Uh, then you know a four drop on turn four, and stuff like that. And if mono white could just go under you, and the blue red decks could just bounce your creatures, and you'd have nothing in play. So having a creature on turn one already allows you to start attacking uh, while you're doing other stuff. So you get some traction going, and because you now have over more oddity as well you're threatening their life, their life total a lot more. So Mono Green used to be a almost strictly mid-range deck, right? And now it actually has the ability to have more aggressive draws that will kill you very quickly and threaten your life total very quickly because it has a one drop with two power, haste creatures, it makes better use of Faceless Haven. So it just behaves as an entirely different deck because you have this powerful one drop. Or not even powerful because you have this one drop that is playable. Right? And the oddity is just okay. Like, we were spoiled by Questing Beast, right? It's no Questing Beast. But it's still a 4 mana, 4 4 trample haste creature. And if you have 7 mana, which is that can get access to a lot, you have Old Grove Trolls, you have Sculptures, you have a lot of lands. So it's not that hard to get to 7 mana in many matchups. It turns into a beast, right? Uh, a, a literal beast, but also a, a beast of a creature. It's an 8 8 with trample that gives everything you control plus 1 plus 1 trample. Energy. So it's the big mirror breaker. So to speak. And the other card that is in my sideboard here is Avabrook Caretaker, uh, which is just, again, a newer breaker of sorts, because it's very, very hard to lose if this card stays in play for a turn. And if it flips, you just win the game on this part, right? It, it becomes impossible for your opponent to, to uh, get back at you after that. Is it better than Tovalar's Huntmaster? I'm not sure. I think if the board is stalled and even, or you know, if you're slightly behind, but you're not dying, then this card is better, right? It is going to win you the game every time. It can't be killed, it's going to pump your creatures, eventually it's going to flip, right? It is just going to win you the game. However, if you are very far behind, then Trovar's Hunt Master is better because it's immediately a 6 6 and 2 2 2s, uh, and that it's much better for stabilizing the battlefield. So I think overall the Caretaker is better, but I'm not entirely sure. It's a card I want to try out a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, so this is the version from my Star City Games article about the deck. You can go check it out. It's a premium article, but it has, you know, a cyber guide and some explanations. Uh, but yeah, and so today we're going to play that. We're on the draw, which is always bad in this format. And <laughs> this format is very play draw dependent. Okay, this hand is <coughs> okay. All right, it... Um, yeah, it's not spectacular because I don't have a two drop, so I don't have a real curve. But if I draw a two drop, the hand becomes very good. And yeah, one one other thing that you might have noticed uh, in my deck is that I don't have Tangle for a Hedron anymore. Like I used to have that card, but because now I have one drops, I think it's a it can be a much bigger cost to just play a land on turn one that's tapped. Well, now I'm just going to be playing. This this mammoth uh, mammoth as creatures right. I was gonna play a mammoth in turn two here, but I drew so many lands that I don't I don't have to. Uh, so yeah, it used to be free to play a tap land turn one because you had no one drops whatsoever, right? And it would only hurt you if you had to play two of them. Nowadays, it's no longer free, 
because you have one drops. Okay, this is not the most impressive curving from my opponent. Do I want to attack and trade? I probably do. <clears throat> like, they'll... Sorry, my creature will grow well, next turn when I play Chariot, but so with theirs. And they might not want to trade. Like, if they don't want to trade, I definitely want to attack, right? Yeah. So I'm not gonna... Am I gonna play Faceless Haven? Attack with Faceless Haven next turn? I'm not, right? So I'm just gonna play this. And... Not show them that I had the Faceless Haven, right? I'll play the Haven next turn. Ooh, blue. So they didn't attack. Why didn't they attack? So I could play Cobra Mammoth, or I could just play Chariot. I think I'm just gonna play Chariot. They didn't attack though. Should I attack? Like I'll I can trade with the I can trade with the Hide Rider, they'll get a token. Like, are they gonna block and trade this for a 2 2? It's possible. Do I care? I think I do. I just don't want to attack. Oh, there's the foil to my faceless haven. I mean, next turn I'm going to attack with a bunch of stuff. There's play itself. Yeah, so now that's a 5-5. Five five. Okay, that's a... Maybe I should have just attacked last turn. Yeah, this escalated very quickly. So how do I win from here? Yeah, I definitely should have a deck luster or anything. Ooh, this is how I win. <laughs> yeah, they definitely shouldn't attack. I mean, I'm gonna play out my hand, right? Probably play the Sculptor. I can't attack. And they can't attack either, so... Maybe I'll draw like the Ovenwald thing and flip it. Uh, that's pretty annoying. I mean, they are drawing a bunch of good cards, right? Like, they have a bunch of two-for-ones that they can draw in their deck. I don't have any of that. Ooh, this was good. This might be how I win. Do I want to play this land? Probably do. Yeah, now I think I can just pass. And like put the burden on Ben to do stuff. I have to hope they kind of brick on... Yeah, like, th this is the problem, right? They're just gonna keep playing stuff like this, and they'll, they'll turn through their deck a lot more than I will. But now I have the Ranger class, so... And at some point, I can start attacking. Like, my creatures will be big. Like, this will eat something, and this will trade, but... Like, they're at 10. Eh. Now they'll get two big creatures. Boo. Should I attack? I have seven attackers. 
Nah. If they attack with the champion of the parish, I mean, I could just chomp block or I could just block with everything. Five mana? And they tap their field of ruin? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing I might have to chum block this. Wait, they sack that one and not the Shambling Gas? That's very weird. Like, Shambling Gas not doing anything. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to chump that. I need to draw Blizzard Brawl Fulgers Atlas Rider. Oh my god. Why is it that this deck is like half creatures? But every time there's a ranger class, it's just all the spells on top. Um What do I do? Do I want to trip? Like, I could attack with this Faceless Haven. It's going to get pumped. Like, the pack leader is going to get pumped too. They have this Fell Stingers, but, like, it's not getting much better for me. So, if I just attack with a pack leader, I could attack with a chariot, given that I'll draw another one, but. So, I'll play this. I'll use it. I mean, I think I do want to trade a back leader for a stinger. Do I? Eh, maybe not. Yeah, that's fine. Next turn, I'll attack with the chariot, though, because I know I'm drawing another chariot. Oh, that zombie I'll double block. Yeah, I can like triple or quadruple block it or something. So they kill one. Kill two. Alright, this is what I got. So as you play Deadly Dispute, they like the Shambling Goth, they can shrink one thing, they got a token. They bump this, and, yeah, I, I don't know what's gonna happen, I'm just... Wait, I took this damage? Oh my god, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I just 16 ball. <laughs> okay, that wasn't optimal, I was meant to, to just jump that. <laughs> Oops. Okay, there's my answer to the writer. Can't really attack either, I don't think. Oh, that would just kill me. Okay. So, what do I want? I think I probably do want the Ranger class. I do want the Ren and Sevens. And I do want some inscriptions, maybe. I don't think I want Snakeskin Veil, even though they have removal. Like, it doesn't seem to be what their deck is about. Do I want the Random Sevens? Maybe I don't want the Ranger class. They're an aggro deck. Like, mostly. Got one of these. Two Inscription seems okay. I mean, I would like... The problem is that a lot of their creatures are big. So Inscription will not always get the job done, but it might just be better than Ren and Seven. But Ren and Seven is pretty good with Chariot. Maybe I should just have Inscriptions. All right, let's try this. Alright, 
we're keeping. Yeah, I don't know if there was much we could have done to change the outcome of that game. Like, obviously I could have attacked a turn before I would have dealt 3 damage, probably. But... I mean, maybe they would have blocked. Because they didn't attack, so th that implies block. But... Possible I should have played the pack leader to then play the inscription and kill the champion as it's small, but... Now I can play Pack Litter plus Sculptor. Or I can just play Old Growth Troll plus plus Kazanda Mammoth as a land. Seems reasonable. I mean, Pack Litter plus Sculptor is not bad either. But... Yeah, I don't mind attacking here. Am I gonna get like counter spelled? That would be kind of awkward. I wish I'd just given a trample. I'm kind of trying to play around. Well, there's not, they're not gonna counter spell me, right? But they could have bounced my troll. I'm trying to play around the minus two, minus two to everything card. Minus three, minus three, sorry, crippling fear. Because, like, m my plan is to just pass, and then depending on what they do, I fight every. Yeah, this is kind of awkward versus a blue-black deck, but I think I need to have this removal of spells. Hexproof? Probably not. I think I'm just going to resubmit. Uh, awkward hand with my mana, but I think I have to keep it. This is so frustrating because this this card is really so important for this deck. Like the deck is a completely different deck with it and without it. Okay, do I want to attack or do I want to block? Probably attack. Do I want to attack at all? I don't think so. Oh my god. Do I just double block this and die to a removal spell? I might have to do that. 
Well, the problem is that they get a token and they just pump everything else anyway. How am I gonna win this? I mean, I have to. I got an island. Yeah, I mean, I have, I guess I don't have a lot of options. I, I just have to hope that things go right. If they just play the exploit zombie or something, that would be pretty bad. Okay, they passed. So if I animate Chariot and I try to attack, I could also just pump Ranger's class and attack with the Spec Leader. But they can sack this, make a token. I don't want to let them kill my Chariot, but I could play Sculptor and pass. Activate Ranger's class and attack, no. Oddity, pass. It's a bit weird. Like, what, what are you gonna do at the end of the turn? I'm just gonna fast the turn. You play the thing, I can kill something in response. Probably just gonna play this. No, I can't play this, because they'll just counter it. That was stupid. I could bump the Ranger class, but then if they just played the 3 3 flyer. They're probably just gonna play the 3 3 flyer here, right? They might even sack the champion. They could have sacked the champion to counter my ranger class. Actually, that would have been pretty good for them. Counter my activation, I think. I need them to tap out so I can just play all my spells, <laughs> but it's so hard. But like, we're in this spot where I'm, they don't have, they seem to not have a flash threat, right? So I'm developing my board here. Like I'm doing things, they're not doing anything. Okay, so now is when I'm, this is when I make my move, right? I probably just want to do the werewolf back leader. And then I can respond by killing the champion as well with the inscription. Maybe I'll just do the ascendant back leader. Maybe the chariot. So I can pump the werewolf back leader. Fight. I think this is right. All right, this was good. <laughs> now, did they do play Crippling Fear? 
I mean, I have the Fistle Haven, I have the Pack Leader that's gonna survive, I have the Oddity in my hand, the Chariot. This is not even a zombie. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, my opponent's deck's pretty interesting. It is very reliant on the Champion of the Parish, though. I think that's the problem with the zombies deck in general. If you don't draw it or you don't kill it, then it's your cards are not as good. But like game one was a pretty impressive display of what this deck can do, I think. Because I was in an overwhelmingly good position. And basically all they had was the champion, then they played the, the Hellas Rider and exploited one thing, and all of a sudden I could never attack again for the rest of the game. Well, that's what I got for today, and if you like my videos and want to support me a little bit more, make sure to check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash pvdbr, and there you can support my work and get some extra perks on top of it. And special thank you to my biggest supporters, Willow Linton, Adam Renzi, Adam Camilleri, Clix, Foxy, Fernando Vizel, Jan Jan, Jack Hart, Joey, Calvin Bank, Kevin Massey, Law Sun, Mattia Giardini, Nate, Safi Weapon, Silvia Leticia, Stu Cameron, Thomas Pocorni, and Dimitri. I really appreciate the support, and I'll see you next week.